December 2023. Hope you and your family had a good Christmas. This is your intelligence briefing coming to you from protestia.com where we read and go through the latest headlines in Christian polemics and discernment news. This program is brought to you, of course, by our intrepid patron supporters who for $5.95 a month over at patreon.com forward slash protestia support this ministry and the research and writing and all that goes into it on a financial level. And we would uh, ask that if you are not a subscriber, that you consider subscribing by heading over there to patreon.com forward slash protestia. Let's get into the headlines. First headline at protestia.com. TD Jakes denies the Trinity in wild Christmas sermon. Well, TD Jakes is a modalist, so we would expect no less. Famed modalist TD Jakes kneecapped all his ardent defenders who have insisted over the years that the megachurch bishop has repented of espousing oneness theology, with Jakes denying the Trinity and engaging in multiple Christological errors during his Christmas Eve service. T.D. Jakes, through, through uh, though continuing, excuse me, to be platformed by all manners of Christian celebrities and leaders, has gone on record saying he doesn't believe Jesus is the second person of the Trinity, but rather just a manifestation of God. Even now, his church website reads, there is one God, creator of all things, infinitely perfect and eternally existing in three manifestations. We know this is not what the Bible teaches, but it is still on his uh, heretical statement of faith. Um, on his website back in 2011, he was invited to the Elephant Room. That was James McDonald of Harvest Church's uh, get-together of all sorts of uh, different Christian persuasions at the roundtable. Prominent Christian pastors from different perspectives would be asked hard questions. And uh, Phil Johnson had written at the time, I believe, about Jakes's appearance at the Elephant Room, a self-styled bishop, quote-unquote, notorious for his love of money, who teaches a false prosperity gospel, who freely shills for every aberration on TBN, who was ordained in a Sibelian denomination, who has been confronted repeatedly about anti-Trinitarianism, who refuses to renounce modalism, who declines to embrace any standard expression of Trinitarian conviction. Such a figure should not be warmly welcomed into evangelical circles and given the platform at an evangelical conference as if we're confident he's a solid brother with good intentions. So it was, uh, yeah, James McDonald and Mark Driscoll at the time playing the fool. Let's see if we have some quotes here. You know what? Let's just listen in. God wrapped himself in a meat suit. <laughs> Incarnation means in meat. In M-E-A-T. To M E E T U. Well, that's clever. I came down on your level. I came where you could touch me. I came where you could see me. If I had shown myself in my original state, it would have been too much for you. It would have burned the eyeballs out of your head. So I hid myself in a meat suit just so we could have a conversation. This is terrible. Absolutely terrible. Absolutely a false teaching on the nature of God, on the three persons of the Trinity. Incarnated divinity. The creator has now become subject to what he created. No, that's not true either. He gave up his omnipotence, his omniscience, Omniscience. and his omnipresence. He submitted himself to prayer because he'd given up omnipotence all-powerful, now he has to go to the garden and pray. <laughs> Omniscience, because he says, no man knoweth the day nor the hour which the Son of Man cometh. No, not the angels, nor the Son, but the Father which is in heaven. It means I don't know everything anymore. You know, this, this would be funnier if it wasn't so horribly offensive and, yeah, heretical, leading people straight to hell. I'm sorry, but if you believe falsely, well, no, I'm not sorry. If you believe falsely about the nature of God, you believe falsely about the person and work of Jesus Christ, uh, you know not God, and you, ought, you will be judged and thrown into hell. This is a serious matter, and as ridiculous it is, as it is to listen to T.D. Jakes go on and on about this, uh, we're going to move on. Just know that, uh, yeah, modalism is a, a heresy, 
a soul damning heresy. Moving on, next headline at Protestia Mormons spend millions lighting up Times Square. I first saw this on X from Jack Posobiec, I think that's how he pronounces the name, the political commentator, talking about how wonderful this was and sharing a video of all the people that were amazed by all of the, the screens in Times Square, I think it's 27 screens, 27 billboards in Times Square lighting up with the story of Jesus, but then uh, Jack cut off the end of his video to not have to admit that it was the uh, Mormon quote-unquote church, which is a cult. It's an anti, uh, anti-biblical uh, heterodox cult had been the ones who had paid for all this and put this up. Uh, our article reads, The Mormon church spent millions of dollars this Christmas lighting up 27 Times Square billboards as part of their Light the World campaign, sharing with the world a nativity story that presents as Christian, but in reality is produced by cultists. So this was a, uh, there is a brief overview of the Mormon views on Jesus and other things that we have linked uh, here from, from nam.net, not an endorsement of nam, of course, fully, but it is good information. And then a description of exactly what happened, including this is the, the YouTube video that was put up by the LDS, uh, the LDS cult to uh, show what they did. And like I said, I saw it on Twitter with a couple of people chopping off the end of the video so as not to admit that it was uh, the Mormons who actually paid for this. Um, you can read more about it over at Protestia. Next headline, this is from Life, lifenews.com. Planned Parenthood admits to taking teens out of state for secret abortions. Quote, we never tell the parents. No shock here. They've been doing this for a long time. This is somebody named Lashana, a managing director at Planned Parenthood in Kansas City, Missouri. Um, a new undercover video just busted the nation's biggest abortion business. Planned Parenthood employee is shown on the video admitting that the abortion giant takes teens, teen girls out of state for secret abortions. As you can plainly see, Planned Parenthood is a, a nexus and a central point, a pivot point for evil in the modern age. Uh, yeah, she laughs about saying, every day, every day we take these uh, young women out of the state to murder their unborn children. There is a video in here, uh, which we don't have time to go through right now, but you can go through by going over to Protestia. We have this article linked over to the Life News article, and you can see the undercover video uh, where Priscilla Jones, the receptionist at this Planned Parenthood, I guess, and this other person admit to the evil that is going across state lines to murder the unborn. Next headline at Protestia, Transformation Church Christmas Eve service evacuated after bomb threat. Transformation Church had its Christmas Eve service turned chaotic after congregants were evacuated mid-service. The results of threat, threats made against the church. This is Mike Todd's church. And halfway through his sermon, as he was, he was unwrapping presents on stage when executive pastor Charles Metcalf approached him and informed him of the threat. The church shut down the service. Law enforcement quickly arrived and swept the building with the help of the church's security team, but found nothing. They have a statement over here. We have some information on this article, more about Mike Todd, more about Transformation Church. Safe to say that bomb threat or no bomb threat, uh, it is not a church that we would recommend attending or mem being a member of or partnering with in any way. Next headline at Protestia, IHOP worship team refuses to evacuate room after bomb threat. Kind of a related story in a way. And keeps playing while cops and canines search the worship team. Now, one thing you have to know about the International House of Prayer is um, they keep their uh, worship, whatever you want to think about the validity of the worship, they keep it going 24-7. So this actually kind of makes sense. The worship team at IHOP refused to leave the stage after a bomb threat was made against them with leadership asking attendees to evacuate. The worship team was given the option to stay on stage or leave with many choosing to remain while law enforcement... Uh, and canine units swept the room around them. An IHOP leader told the audience, we've been re we have been reported, it has been reported, that somebody put a bomb inside this room. So police are going to do some search, see if the room is safe. We, ha we will have the worship team continue. I will be standing right here. And we will inform you if you are safe to come back in the room. Now, our article says it's unclear why they chose to remain in the room despite the threat, but notably, IHOP Casey has had a prayer room with live worship music and prayer being played around the clock 24 hours a day for the last 25 years. However, they have occasionally, quote, moved the fire to different parts of the building, such as when the room required their carpets to be cleaned or during conferences. 
You can read more about this at protestia.com, including a Twitter embed of the stream itself or when this happened. There's video of this at Protestia. Next headline, this coming from morningstarnews.org. 160 people massacred in Christian areas of Plateau State in Nigeria. Terrorists massacred 160 people, many of them preparing for church Christmas programs Saturday night through Monday in a coordinated attack on predominantly Christian areas in Plateau State, Nigeria. Church pastors were killed and hundreds of houses were destroyed in the massacres in villages of Barkin Ladi, uh, Bokos, and Mangu counties, officials and residents said. You can read about this. We have this at Protestia as a curated post and a link to the Morningstar News that describes what happened. Uh, of course, our, our prayers and consolation are with those who uh, were murdered, and we pray that uh, they were saved and known by the Lord and in heaven right now. And we would, of course, also pray for justice to be done and the evil murderers that did this to be uh, brought to justice um, swiftly. Next headline at Protestia, financial guru Dave Ramsey wins case against COVID complainer, but class action lawsuit still, still looms. A federal judge has dismissed a lawsuit against Christian financial guru Dave Ramsey that sought damages for the discrimination around COVID protocols and what he claimed were, and what claimed, uh, I guess the, the uh, plaintiff here claimed were poor working conditions. Brad Amos was a senior video editor hired in 2019. Once the pandemic hit, he told his bosses he wanted to work from home to protect his health and that of his family, which he says was in accordance with his religious beliefs. His request was denied. He was terminated in July 2020. According to Amos, his six-year-old son has Coach disease, a rare disorder involving an overabundance of blood vessels in the eye, and his wife is, quote, predisposed to pneumonia. Therefore, he took measures to ensure their safety. All the while, Ramsey was publicly berating anyone taking preventative measures in the office. This is what the plaintiff claims. Apparently, um, the district court in uh, Tennessee ruled that Amos's lawyers had failed to show he'd been misled um, about the working conditions and that representing a company as drama-free or family-friendly was a statement of opinion, not a promise, the judge ruled. Uh, Ramsey is still facing a, a class action lawsuit after being sued by former followers for $150 million over his endorsement of a failed timeshare exit company that defrauded customers out of millions. We have a few other uh, articles about our concerns with Dave Ramsey at the bottom of this one at protestia.com. Under that headline that uh, financial guru Dave Ramsey wins case against COVID complainer. Next headline at Protestia, abortion abolitionist has murderer sign confiscated at NBA game. So prominent abortion abolitionist Russell Hunter caused a bit of a ruckus after holding up a sign at yesterday's NBA game. This is a picture right here of him holding up the sign saying Anthony Edwards, uh, who I believe is a point guard or a shooting guard uh, for the Minnesota Timberwolves, uh, is a murderer because he paid uh, either his girlfriend or a girl that used to be his girlfriend to abort his unborn child. Yes, that would make him a murderer. Hunter was referring to Minnesota Timberwolves shooting guard Anthony Edwards, who pressured a woman he was seeing to have an abortion after getting her pregnant, offering her $100,000 if she murdered his and her baby, then asked her to send proof once the abortion was complete. Hunter said the sign was confiscated, from him, but plans to, this is uh, um, Hunter, who was in the, brought the sign of the game, plans to release a video of the incident soon. This is a tweet from Abolitionist Rising that shows the pictures. And yes, of course, we would second the fact that Anthony Edwards, the um, shooting guard for the Timberwolves, is indeed a murderer. In fact, a pay, uh, a pay to murder murderer for funding this and for going along with it. It's evil and he needs to repent in places faith, hope, and trust in Jesus Christ. Next headline from The Daily Citizen, Christian mom defends her faith, sues Oregon for preventing adoption because of Christian beliefs. Um, this was by Nicole Hunt uh, yesterday. Uh, all, all one Oregon mom wanted for Christmas was to welcome children from the foster care system into her family. Instead, she's suing the state of Oregon for religious discrimination. Oregon is refusing to let Jessica Bates adopt foster siblings because her Christian beliefs about human sexuality. She believes 
Boys and girls are biologically different, and those differences are good and should be celebrated. Oregon State officials say Bates is unfit to adopt or even participate in the foster system because she will not agree to use preferred pronouns or assist a child in gender transition. Of course, we would say that that makes her a normal person exercising the basics, the basics, the core basics of human dignity and righteousness to not lie and to not be willing to mutilate the bodies of children um, should, should be uh, a requirement of every, every breathing individual on this planet. Uh, Bates filed a, a notion of appeal, uh, notice of appeal, excuse me, to the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals after the lower court ruled against her. So this will head to the Ninth uh, Circuit Court of Appeals and uh, possibly, uh, possibly move on from there if the circuit court uh, also upholds the uh, Oregon State decision here. Um, Alliance Defending Freedom is representing Bates. You can go over to Protestia. There is, there is a um, link to the Focus on the Family Daily Citizen to read the rest of this article that you can get to from protestia.com. Last headline at Protestia for this intelligence briefing, famed Christian book publisher releases book, quote, Wisdom from the Witch of Endor, Four Rules for Living. So this is famed Christian book publisher Erdman's we're going to put Christian in quotes here, is releasing a new book based on the wisdom of the witch of Endor, lauding the wicked medium who brought forth the spirit of Samuel, um, excuse me, who who brought for the spirit uh, of Samuel during a demonic seance in 1 Samuel 28 and urged Christians to, quote, embrace the wisdom of a little known hero from the Bible. So, So the witch of Endor is considered a hero of the Bible, according to this pu- this book by uh, Tikva Framer Kenzie. I don't know who that is, but apparently Erdman's has published this, and uh, yeah, it's it's going to be released. It looks like publication date is January thirtieth of twenty twenty four. Erdman's Publishing Company is a longtime publisher of Christian books established in 1911. They're an independent publisher of religious books from academic books, scholarly work in theology, biblical studies, religious history, to popular titles in spirituality, spirituality, ministry, and cultural criticism. They have uh, published recently In Quest of the Historical Adam by William Lane Craig. Mm, uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> We'll, we'll, we'll set that aside for now. A commentary on Galatians by N.T. Wright, The Gospel According to John by D.A. Carson, Spiritual Depression by, by Martin Lloyd-Jones, Jones, and many, many biblical commentaries. So it looks like they got a few that are probably solid. Uh, we wouldn't consider N.T. Wright or William Lane Craig to be solid. Uh, William Lane Craig, especially on the issue of creation, and N.T. Wright on uh, more or less everything. So in 2022, Erdman's released a series of statements that supported Pride Month, demonstrating that they had abandoned their biblical beliefs and instead should be viewed as a transgressive entity actively spreading pagan propaganda. You can read more about this over at protestia.com. Thank you for sticking with me on this edition of the Intelligence Briefing for Wednesday, the 27th of December, 2023. Stay tuned to protestia.com for all of your latest in Christian polemics and discernment news. We'll see you again next time. As always, Semper Reformanda. Reformanda.